with that, I'll move to the first slide. Okay, very good. So the, the four learning objectives are what product qualify for credit, what do the FSC classifications mean, that will be a fun one, how to specify the 50% and 100% goal, as most of you know, you can get an innovation point with this credit, and how to fill out the template. First, a little history of this credit. Uh, in the old days, it used to be easy. Most products were either 100% FSC certified or met the minimum 70%. FSC recycled wood could be applied to the credit. Uh, that's no longer true. Then the invoices were not required, and chain of custody for vendors were not required. So you can see that it was quite a field day with this credit before the new rules were in place. What are the new rules? What products qualify for credit? Uh, all new wood-based materials, I will go into detail on the word new in a few future slides. Uh, for the first point, if the minimum requirement is 50% based on cost, and then if you want an innovation credit, which requires 95%, but I would shoot for 100 if you're going after that credit, um, you would specify all wood to be FSC certified. And that may not be an easy task. And as Mark mentioned, not all wood is available in FSC. So you better be, do your homework on that one before you specify 100% across the board. What products are exempt or excluded? Uh, temporary wood is exempt, but you can include it at your will. Same for furniture. Reclaimed wood is no longer part of FSC 7 with the exception of uh, the classification FSC mixed credit. And I'll go into that in detail. Uh, Salvage Richard, wood. If I, could, if I could interrupt just for a second. The, uh, with, with the issue of furniture being exempt uh, and may be included if it's used across all MR credits, um, would the incentive be for someone to include it if they were, for example, um, doing a LEED CI project and they're just trying to get more dollar volume? into their um, uh, mm -hmm. lead yes. program? Yes. And it would not have only apply to CI. Um, I have done it uh, often with uh, new construction. Uh, let's say you're going after the recycled credit or the local material credit, and you don't quite meet it. By adding furniture, you can easily bump it up because the furniture budget can be in the millions of dollars right. to capture those credits. So th that's one reason why you want to include it. Lead doesn't require you to include it. Does thank that you. answer your question? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then recycled wood is no longer applies to MRC7. It does apply to MRC4 credit. Uh, in the past, you could um, what they uh, often refer to as double dip apply to both credits, but not any longer. Uh, and there is an exemption with FSC mixed credit. Which I will go into detail on. Vendor invoice requirements. There are four main requirements, and I have a sample vendor invoice uh, coming up that will help uh, clarify this one. Right. Uh, so you must. You in other words, you must submit the vendor invoice, um, or you must have it available if the credit is audited. I mean, you don't actually submit it, right? Just the certificate no. number. No, you do submit it. And in fact, if you don't submit it, you not get the credit. It's, it's in interesting when I show the template demo. Um, it will actually tally all the wood products that have the documentation. And if you don't check that off, uh, it won't give you the credit. So Right. R Richard's referring to later on in this presentation, he has the actual uh, lead template that, that he'll show to illustrate the point. Exactly. What the uh, FS, uh, the first classification is FS, FSC pure, which is 100% FSC certified wood. And then there's the mixed credit, which meets a 90% batch minimum. So if it meets that 90%, then it will qualify for 100% FSC. So if you see the first two in the product data, that essentially means 100% credit. The third one is tricky. 
this mixed uh, and then you would input the amount of percentage. But you have to know what the product will yield. And that's not always clear from product data. And I'll go into that detail as well. FSC recycled, and that is a distinct classification. That classification cannot be applied to MRC7. And there's another classification called FSC recycled credit, which also cannot apply to MRC7. So now you see we have five classifications. And more recently, the latest update is this July 19, 2010. And you can find these in the lead addenda, which I'll, I'll have a link to that site at the end of the PowerPoint. There is no partial claims. Uh, in the past, the doors have been famous for saying that the core is FSC certified and leave it at that. That's no longer acceptable. You have to classify for good reason. Much of the value of the wood will apply to the FSC credit. And the other new update is that cabinet makers and artificial mill workers who have been exempt in the past, if they work off-site with the FSC product, they must be COC certified. In the past, they've been considered subcontractors, and uh, they, they have been exempt. But the issue here is that these mill workers may have other non-FSC product on site, and who's to say whether they mix product, whether intentionally or by accident, in the process of uh, manufacturing it uh, on in their fabrication sites. FSC logo is the, the certifier. Certifiers in the U.S. There's two. Everyone probably up on this uh, SCS Scientific Certification System in Smartwood, which is uh, un comes under the umbrella of Rainforest Alliance. Now here's a typical chain of custody for SCS. This is for Nidri flooring, and I'm going to blow this up. Okay, can you see the, my screen with the red marks, Matt? Yes, we can. Okay. So as you can see, there's the FSC mix, which means 100%. If it was had a percentage mark, then it's for the percentage mark that would be on the certificate. And there's a validation date. This is important. It, it should fall within this validation date uh, if you receive the certificate. If it's outdated, I wouldn't accept it and request a new one. This this is the cert FSC cert, uh, certificate provided by Scientific Certification Systems, which uh, might look different um, from a rainforest uh, certification sheet. That, that's coming up. Okay. Okay. This is the one advanced. Uh, let me try this. Here's a uh, a smart wood or rainforest alliance certificate. Uh, whoops. What they look like doesn't matter. It's uh, what's on the certificate. And unfortunately, I have to be in this mode in order to blow it up. So I'm going to stay in the other mode. Now the the SCS um, seems to have a one year certificate time period, and the Rainforest Alliance seems to be a five-year period. Do um, you have any issues with that? Not at all. No, there are two different systems, and one system is for longer term than the other. Uh, this one makes it easier, so you don't have to keep updating it. But no, there's no issue there at all, as long as the date uh, is up to date, the validation dates are current. And I circled this here, note products and species, including the scope of certificate. And you can find that on the FSC website, which I'll go to at the end. OK, I'm going to stay in this mode, because then I can pop up. Uh, here's a typical product data for interior doors. And this is an example of a manufacturer who's not up to date with the rules. What he's claiming here 
is that the can you see my cursor Matt we can um, and actually before we get into that we did have one point indicating that um, SCS now does issue a five-year certificate I don't know if you want to speak about that or if that's just more of a correction um, just wanted to bring that up as one topic that was being brought up Mm -hmm. Which we did note that in the SES. Maybe Smartwood uh, hasn't um, got up to date on that because the Smartwood was for a shorter term. But that, that's a good point to know. Mm -hmm. So if you look at my cursor here, it says it's 100% pre consumer recycled content for the core. That no longer is valid. You cannot make a partial claim. It has to be for the whole door. So now on the next line, they're saying that the the whole door is 70 cent FSC mix. So the question is, are they now referring to the 30% remainder that's not FSC? Is that 70% mixed? Or is it uh, 100%? It gets and, confusing. Um, OK, I just opened the left hand example. And the right hand, uh, I'm no longer going to be able to blow that up to show you the right. manufacturer information. But basically, they're stating a partial claim just on the door core, which no longer is allowed. Uh, when, once they fix this, uh, they'll be able to claim the uh, FSC mixed. And in this case, it's going to be 70% because only the core is uh, certified wood, not the remainder 30%. So can if you go to slide 13? Sure can. And that is. No, there we go. Everyone should see page 13 now. Yes. Now, it's another uh, interior wood door. Vendor invoice. And uh, this is one that uh, did fix the information mark. They didn't provide the line item information. So they, they went back and uh, fixed it. And for every line item, uh, you can't see my cursor. There, there are items marked on the left-hand uh, sample. For every line item, it stands for a door type. And you would have to have the price of the door, uh, the classification. In most cases, doors are 70% FSC. And somewhere on the invoice, you would have to have the, FS, uh, the COC number from the supplier, not from door manufacturer. That's important because the chain of custody has to follow through straight through to the supplier. And, then right. the, and, it, and this may be a project that is is just, you know, since people switched for LEED 2009 um, and you've gotten a project where you've done the excavation, put up the steel and concrete, and now you're getting the doors. So this may actually be a, an early project. Um, for FSC certification under the, the new program. And it, it may be, or I guess we're hoping, that FSC is notifying its COC people what they really need to provide. Yes, that's correct. Uh, unfortunately, LEED will um, update the addenda. And, and that, that addenda will hold for uh, all projects, no matter when the registration date is. And that seems to be unfair at times. But uh, that's the, the rule that if it's on the addenda, then you have to follow those rules. So that's correct, Mark. Uh, oftentimes, the manufacturers are not up to date with the rules, and so you have to uh, educate them so you can get the correct information. And I, mean, I don't feel that they're trying to uh, cheat the customer, just that they, they're not clear on the rules themselves. Can you go to pay, uh, PowerPoint number 14? Yep. Yeah, and it appears that we're one page off. So you're referencing 14, and I'm on page 15. But we're all on the same page now. And so that says Camco Supply on the left and Algama on the right. Yes, OK. We're on slide yep. 14. Yep. Oh, and is, it's, is your you're number on 14, system? we're on 15. That's OK. <laughs> okay. Yep. But we yeah. are good to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. The, the copyright slide was omitted, so it's, we're back one. OK. So here's another case uh, where, where Algomer was not up to date with the rules. And Camco is the supplier of the Algomer doors. And so they 
revise their vendor invoice to include line items on the left side, the very bottom. There's a line items for each door type with the dollar amount in the FSC classification. So that, that's how the vendor invoices have to be broken out. And if there are no, any non-FSC doors, they have to be included too. Because the way you, you earn this credit is you have to meet the 50% by cost. So they, they, we need to know what the cost of all wood is, whether FSC or not. So moving to 15 or 6. Mm -hmm. And it should be loading right about now. And... And that's an Armstrong, Armstrong Woodworks slide on the left and a Materials and Resources slide on the right. <laughs> Correct. Now, this one here, and it's surprising that Armstrong is not up to date because they're, they're pretty uh, well-versed with LEED and uh, have a, a very good website. You can even get uh, LEED documentation data by um, entering your project name and the, the uh, product number and cost, and it uh, provides you with all the correct information except for FSC wood. That, that one they, is, not in, is not included in their Green Genie um, software. So on this one, I'm referring to wood paneled ceilings, which is not often seen in projects. Uh, a lot of the CI projects will have wood paneled ceilings. And Armstrong is claiming two things, that it's 92% recycled, pre-consumer recycled wood, and at the same time, it's a FSC mixed, 92% product. So to me, that it seems to be some inconsistencies here. It's not allowed anymore, and at the same time, that it's FSC mixed. And from what I've been told, as of yesterday, uh, it's an error on the data sheet. It's not a pre-consumer recycled product. And the, 90, uh, the FSC mix 92% is correct. There is recycled in it. And if it's FSC mix and has recycled product in it, then it's allowed. That's the only exception when it's built in the FSC mix. So, so the best thing for the manufacturers to do is not to say anything about recycled because it just confuses the issue uh, when they're promoting the product as being FSC certified. Sometimes too much information can be confusing. Have you found that out, uh, Mark, as well? Well, and then there's also the issue of double dipping on recycled content. Yeah. You know, where you can take things. And, and yet many designers are looking for uh, recycled content just as a, as a benchmark. So the manufacturers are being pressed. And it's difficult for data sheets to, mm -hmm. to point out, well, what are you really after here? And, um, mm -hmm. And so the marketplace is, uh, is adjusting. And you know, once uh, data sheets are, are printed and distributed in catalogs, although most people do things online, it'll be there for a year or two before it's revised. So um, mm -hmm. um, it is always better to go back online to find the current data sheet. Right. And hopefully their online sites are more current. Right. So that's true. Today, the no, you can no longer double dip. You can either take one or the other. And the, the problem is here is that the manufacturers sometimes will make an effort to have a recycled product that's FSC certified. And there is such an animal. Um, but in most cases, that recycled product, FSC certified or not, is, cannot be applied to FSC wood credit. Only the well, I mean, that credit. brings up an interesting point, Richard, because, you know, acoustical ceilings have been uh, always been very careful with their recycled content, and, uh, you know, architects have relied on that uh, contribution. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a wood ceiling where it's a wood veneer and the backing potentially is a recycled material, mm -hmm. um, where would you see that being claimed in a, in a lead application? Well, in this particular slide on the left-hand side sample, they're making both claims that it's FSC certified and it's pre-consumer recycled. Uh, again, it's an error on the form. It is FSC mixed 92%. Uh, but what they're promoting here is the fact that it's FSC certified. And if that's the case, the manufacturers have to be consistent that they're promoting FSC wood and not recycled wood. 
and that, and that will. Well, but what about recycled content? Um, that, that's that's fine, and it's helpful, providing you're only giving the information as uh, recycled content and not as FSC. And in this case, you're paying a premium for the FSC substrate, so you don't want to confuse it with being a, re a recycled product as well, because you can't apply it to e either way. Okay. And most projects will buy a product because it's going to meet the FSC credit, not because it's going to meet the recycle credit. Uh, there are plenty of other products in a building project that will meet the, uh, the recycle, but not the FSC. Right. Do you follow? Especially if you're yeah. going after the 100% rule. Yep. OK, why well, don't we move on to this slide. Nope. I, I actually have one question slash statement and a couple other ones after that. One was just wondering now, um, if the project is version 2.2, are they holding yeah. them to 2009 and the addenda? Yes. Slash, are version 2.2 projects still loosely documented? No. No, they are holding it to the addenda, which okay. seems to be unfair, but that is the case. And it was just more of a, more of a question slash statement indicating um, with the idea of the use of BIM data sheets. Um, and future thinking, the idea of database-driven website info for manufacturers. Mm -hmm. You've heard anything about that, where that's going? That was just kind of more of a comment. Um, and then also, um, with that being well, updated to, to, just to, oh. just to respond to that um, comment, um, you know, CSI's National Technical Committee is working on um, uh, property sets, which I guess are also could be viewed as uh, BIM templates or um, outline specs in BIM. Um, so I think that that information will be, um, many of the manufacturers who have developed BIM objects have a data set with it and uh, they'll need to update this information in, in their own um, data sets, which is a little bit different than what the Building Smart Alliance and CSI are doing on the uh, whole building design guide uh, website, but that's a, that's a different conversation. Sure, and it was it was going off of that was I, I think much more of a, a future hope I think Jonathan Miller pointed out that perhaps even then the FSC wood percentages could change from week to week obviously depending on what content is in sight and able to be used for the products they're producing um, within their chain of um, manufacturing. Um, so I think that's something I guess maybe to look into and hopefully maybe technology would get that far. Um, there were two additional questions then being. Um, can the product be FSC and recycled at the same time? No. And then addition, okay. And then additionally, the next question was: Is it not possible for a manufacturer to recycle pre-consumer FSC scrap and get credit for it? Yes, and and they do that. And what happens there? It'll be put into the FSC mixed uh, percentage category. But the okay. answer would be no to the first question. You cannot uh, make both claims anymore. Okay. That and just, 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 a, just as an aside, um, um, our next meeting, which is March 15th, is a meeting where we're, Richard will be online, I'll be online, a few other people, but it will be sort of an open forum because uh, um, we'd like to be able to answer all of your questions, um, but you know, some people are expert at this and some people are just learning, so it is important that today we, we get through the uh, presentation. Okay. Um, we have one more question from Eric, but I'll leave that one for a little bit later, and we can continue the next slide and see if maybe the presentation will address some of that as we go. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to slide 17. Slide 17 on our side, which looks to be a single sheet with MR5, MR7, and then some IEQs on the bottom. Yes. Okay. And unfortunately, I would have blew this up, but we can no longer do that. Um, this is an example of a data sheet that is correct. It's Nidri wood flooring. And it's a good example because they very clearly identify the product as being FSA mixed 72%. Now, if there's recycled content in there, it doesn't matter. They don't mention it. It keeps things clean. Um, uh, what we're concerned about here and what the manufacturer is promoting is that it's an FSC wood product. So they're very up to date on the rules and uh, they know how to uh, present the data correctly. So if you had this and, data sheet, you would not be uh, confused. 
I would say, yeah. they, yep. they, Richard, they also point out that um, it's floor score certified. So here's a case where you do have um, um, wood flooring, which has to comply with two lead credits, both for uh, potentially for floor score and for re recycled content, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to what we noticed uh, a minute ago where um, the ceiling was no longer going to contribute to recycled content. It was only going to contribute to FSC. Yes, uh, but you're wrong on the count. There's four credits involved here. Uh, wood flooring is one of the more complicated ones. Not only floor score, but also it, is, it has no UF, so it meets that credit. And it's pre-finished, so there's no issues about uh, the uh, the finish uh, credit. So wood floors are have uh, four credits applied to it. And, and it's actually all on this data sheet. They're very good with the lead documentation. So let's move to the next one. How to specify 50% okay. goal. Is that what you have? And I should be able to. I had actually blown that one up for you. I got that to work. Which one? So the one we had just previously talked about. So as you talked about, is it was the blowing up PDF. But we are now on to how to specify the 50% goal. I see. Do you want me to go back to the blow up? No, and I don't think, you, I, I don't think yep. you need to do that. Okay. 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 Uh, how to specify the 50% goal. Again, there's two goals. It's to meet the 50% benchmark for one credit. If you want to meet uh, the innovation portion, you have to meet 95%, but uh, you always want to shoot for 100 now, as Mark mentioned earlier on, you have to be careful with the 100% goal. But let me go to this one first. There are two practices. One is to specify FSC across the board for 50% of the product. This practice is not recommended. Uh, contractors do not buy half of their studs FSC and the other half not FSC. They don't buy doors half FSC and the other half not FSC. It, it um, gets into a can of worms. It, the better way to specify is the next bullet point. Uh, you would consult with the cost estimate and then determine your uh, target wood section to yield 50%. So in most commercial construction, wood doors and the millwork will control the FSC credit and usually either have to have all the doors FSC, all the millwork, but it depends on the, the dollar amount. And that's the easiest way to specify this credit. Beyond that, make sure that the uh, the entire product is FSC certified, and this should be in the spec. And the, the classifications, again, are FSC pure, FSC mixed credit, or the FSC mixed partial uh, credit. And I would also add no FSC recycled, which is another classification that only applies to MRC4. Uh, make sure the vendor invoice requirements are in there. And finally, the, make sure the COC requirements are in there and include the uh, cabinet makers and artificial mill workers if they're working off-site with the product. OK, can you go to the next slide? I'm sure I can. Now here's the 100% goal. Um, you have to do your homework here because not all products are available in FSC. And I had recently had an example of this. Uh, the architect specified a white uh, cedar, a northern white cedar, for a project on Cape Cod uh, for uh, contextual reasons. But we could not find that in FSC. We did a lot of um, sourcing for it, but it's just not available. It's an endangered wood. So the only place you're going to get northern white cedar is in Canada, and there were none available in FSC. So that will mix the 100% uh, goal right there. So you want to make sure you re do your research to make sure the product is available before you specify that. Or, or make it a maybe, but that's often a, uh, an issue to have a, a maybe in the specification. And Richard, your first point there, you know, I think a lot of times uh, we've thought of recycled content or regional materials in CSI divisions 2 through 10 um, and or inside the uh, building envelope. And here you're using an example to not forget your wood fences and your wood furnishings. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, and I'll show that in the uh, sample template. Uh, Lead explicitly includes these additional sections, uh, 32 uh, section division. And don't forget the wood panel ceilings, if you have any, in the 9500 uh, section. Uh, wood fences, uh, sometimes there is a wood fence for architectural reasons, uh, even though it's in this um, section at the end of the uh, CSI format, it still applies to FSC credit. Same for wood furnishings. That's not uh, Division 12. That's uh, 32,000. That has to do with, uh, say, you had picnic tables or uh, benches that had a, a pay, um, hardwood plank or there was some other uh, outdoor furniture that required a, a wood. Right, or wood, or wood decking. Wood decking, yes. Yeah. The next bullet point, uh, the entire product, uh, same for the 50%, uh, has to be uh, FSC certified. Make sure the vendor invoice requirements are in there and the COC requirements, uh, especially for cabinet makers and artificial mill workers. Okay, before we go to the uh the next slide about the, the template, uh, Matt, did Eric, was Eric's question, um, did you want to go to that now? Sorry, I was on mute there. I do think it was sort of touched on, but I'll bring up the question of sure. um, what if an interior door has an agrofiber core, but the remaining component is wood? How does that get classified or how does that get addressed? That's a good point, and uh, my sample template here will, will demonstrate that. The agrofiber is um, not wood, so that wouldn't apply, but the wood portion would. And if can you blow up the um, template that I sent you as a separate attachment? I can find it quick. If you give me just a moment, I'll let you yeah. talk while I look it up. Sure, because uh, then, then they can see it uh, full blown up. But Richard, didn't you say... Um a few minutes ago that a, a door either does or doesn't contribute to the uh, FSC credit. Um, mm -hmm. And so does if it has an agrofiber core, is that just reducing the value of the door that contributes? Um, well, no, that's not the issue. It's the wood uh, component that's in the door. It's true, it won't apply to the FSC, but keep in mind that we need to know what the dollar amount is for the non-FSC wood. So if an agrofiber door had, say, 30% wood, that will have to show up in the template. And then as soon as Matt blows it up, I'll show but how it, it works. But it won't show yeah. up as non-FSC wood because agrofiber isn't wood. No, I think the caller said they had both. Oh, okay. It had agrofiber and wood. Correct. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Is that template blown up? It is. I don't know if there's a specific page you'd like me to go to. Uh, start at the top, if you will. Okay. So you see all options? Yep, they're all there. Okay. Um, before I begin this, I know your specifiers for the most part, and why you may have the question why you need to know about the lead template. The lead template is very educational. You, you can understand the intent of the credit very well if you go through a, uh, a lead template. So. Under all options, you, you choose which ones you choo uh, you're chasing after, whether it's recycled, regional, certified. And you also, you check off furniture is included. You see that, Matt? Correct. Division. That would be Division 12. In most cases, you would not. If it was CI, you probably would. So if you can scroll down. OK. You'll see the dollar amount there. In this case, it's uh, six million uh, under these sections. Now, let me just mm -hmm. touch upon these. Do you see total CSI divisions? Uh, is, it's at the bottom of the first page. If you scroll bottom down, of the first page. Yeah, if you scroll down after options, you'll see uh, a dollar amount. So, in other words, it's the page that says MR Credit Seven Certified Wood. Yep. Yeah, and, and then there's a. A and gray then there's box. A gray box. Yeah, the gray box. box. That, okay. yep. that uh, talks about the calculation of the um, exactly the value of materials based on a percentage established by lead. 
Yes, and what's important here is divisions 3 to 10, and then they uh, mention the 31, 32 divisions. And that's where the wood doors or, I mean, the wood furnishings or the wood fence would come into play. And that's why it's part of the credit, because they explicitly include it. So scrolling further down, you'll see the spreadsheet. Yep. Now the gray area is the, the credit you chose. In this case, MR3 is white because it wasn't chosen the same for MR6. But if it's gray, these uh, templates try to uh, make it idiot-proof. If you forget something, it won't compute. So you have to fill in all the gray areas. So under the first line item precast plank, obviously there's no, not going to be any wood. We're going to pay attention to the last column, MRC7. So all these are zero. I'm going to scroll down until we hit one that has wood in it. So three quarters of the way down the page are wood doors. Yes. Ma and ma there's a, a cost of $132,000. And mm -hmm. you go over to percent new wood, you get 30%. And so I guess you will uh, get 30% of that value? Exactly. And let me explain what happened there. They Lanthan made a claim that they were FSC certified, but only the wood core was FSC certified, and it turned out it was a recycled product. So we lost the 70% contribution. The balance of the doors were new wood, and you see it here because it, it comes into play in this credit. We have to know what the dollar value for that 30% is. So that's why it's known as 30% and zero under FSC. You follow that? Sure, and then um, so if we go to the yeah, and let me just mention the last sure. box. We see the X. That's whether you included the vendor invoice or not. If the X is not checked, you won't, it won't compute the value. Okay, so let's scroll down. So at the bottom of uh, the page three of five there are, mm -hmm. is the fire retardant lumber, the pressure treated lumber, the uh, maple millwork, and the solid lumber millwork. Yes, and those are straightforward. Solid wood is 100% wood, and it's either FSC or it's not. There's, there's no guesswork there. And uh, with a good spec, you're going to get um, all these products as 100%. So that's why you see 100 in both columns. It's 100% wood, and it's 100% FSC, because it's solid wood. There's no issues there. So let's go down to the next group. All right, so this is page four or five, mm -hmm. and it's wood veneer. Uh, paneling, wood ceilings, wood floors, wood fencing, wood right. site furnishing. Yep, these are the fun ones. Uh, the first one being this, the wood uh, ceilings. Uh, if you recall, the, the wood ceilings have a substrate that's uh, recycled, or it's a, it's a FSC uh, mixed product. And it claimed to be FSC mixed 92%, so that's why the last column is 92 but it was 100% wood product because the veneers on both sides were non-FSC, but it's, it, they were wood, so that's 100. And we checked off the, the cut, stands for product cut, in the vendor invoice in this case, because we, we did have it. Under wood, wood plank flooring, the Nidri product, um, that was very clear. It was marked FSC mixed 72%, so we entered that in the last column, and it was 100% wood. And that the template does all the calculations. Oftentimes, I'll see the manufacturer making the mistake of putting in the value of that 72%, the dollar value. And all that does is confuse the issue. The template does that. All they need to do is tell us what percentage is FSC and, uh, and leave it at that. Uh, I know they're trying to be helpful, but when they give you the dollar value of that 72%, they're only confusing everyone. So, Mark, if you're doing work with manufacturers, you want to make that point. Right. It um, A lot of that comes in during construction uh, administration, and um, sometimes as a specifier, I don't see that, just the people doing CA doing it. Um, the, the, on this page four or five, the table at the bottom, mm -hmm. where uh, can you explain those three lines, the total sustainable criteria value, new wood yeah. materials cost? Yeah. And let me go through the, the other two items, which was Division 32, uh, which is atypical. The wood fence and the wood site furnishings that had IPA um, 
planks on the wood furnishings, and there was a white uh, oak fence. Um, these are placeholders for now because the manufacturer has not provided the cost or the um, FSC information. But for, for demo purposes, I put them in here. They're both 100% wood, and they're either going to be both 100% FSC or, or not. But I, I, again, I just entered them here for demonstration purposes. Now that last line across from sustainable criteria value, th this is where the template does all the number crunching. And this is why manufacturers do not have to tell us what the value is for their product. It, it's all computed by the template. So the, uh, another important point is the table indicator. If you forgot something, it will be incomplete and won't compute the credit. So when you see complete, that's good. Let's scroll down, Mark, and I'll show you the numbers here. So it does all the number crunching. It's $380,000 is a sustainable uh, criteria value. That's all the percentages of wood and all the products add up to. And the wood value is 441000 so you get 86%. You don't make the innovation point, but you make the 50% uh, benchmark for the one point. Now the next checkpoint, you see wood-based products that are included on the template is not considered salvaged, reused, or recycled. You have to check that off. They want to make sure you haven't included that. Again, if there's recycled content in an FSC mixed product, that's uh, that's accepted, but it's built into it, so you don't have to worry about it. It's only when the manufacturers give us two information and tell us that, and it just confuses the issue. And then finally, you'll see on the last page that uh, the cut sheets were provided for 100%. If that's not 100%, uh, the, the point won't compute, commute at the very end. You'll see certified wood points documented. It will not document unless it's 100% uh, vendor invoice is uploaded. And you do have to upload it in uh, this uh, box right here, which goes to another window. So. But basically, they cut out all the loopholes and it made it very clean. You you can't um, cheat or by accident um, mess up on this credit anymore. And and just as a side note, the uh, the balloting that might have um, accepted SFI in in addition to FSC uh, was declined. So for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. um, uh, FSC is the only wood uh, rating system that that's, LEED recognizes. That's correct. And I'm going to go into that in the next slide, Mark. I guess I'm just sorry for getting ahead of you there, Richard. <laughs> no, it's a good point. Okay, are there we any questions? Have, yeah. yeah, we had one question to clarify, which I'm going to go back to. I believe it was on page, two, 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 page 2 of the PDF under the wood doors. Um, there was a question with it being um, indicated that the lamp, the Lambton doors that were indicated here um, could have deducted 70% um, um, mm -hmm. because of the recycled material. So then with the question was, so the mm -hmm. total wood dollar amount, would that have been reduced by 70% of the total 139000 or how does that exactly work? Well, again, uh, you don't have to do any computing. You entered the full dollar amount, and, and it, let's say it was 70% FSC. The template uh, does the number crunching. Okay. So as long as you enter the correct amounts, you don't have to do any. Uh, you don't have to adjust the dollar amount. It 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 takes seventy percent of that dollar amount from that column. Okay. Do, is that, is that um, clear? Nope. That that should do it. No, I was just okay. wanted to verify that. And uh, Linda just responded, "Yes, that makes sense." So okay. we're good to go. Very good. So I'm going to go. Back to the presentation? Yes. Um, so I, I did the template demo, and we have six minutes here, so let's go. Now, here is the, um, the addenda, and it was recently updated only a few weeks ago, February 2nd. And what they do here is all the, they uh, compilate all the addenda into one document. So if you go to the website, and I have a link to it, you'll get this addenda, and, and this is where the latest information on the the FSC credit uh, can be found. And they have 
an addenda for edition one and an addenda for edition two. I happen to have the first edition, but it, whatever edition you have, you'd go to that addenda so the pages match up. That's the only difference. And, and Matt, so if people want to um, uh, get to that link again, um, how many days before this is posted on the CSI website? The PowerPoint I will upload probably in the next 15 minutes. Um, and then the video of this, after I edit out for the technical glitch we had in the middle there and get it ready to go, that should probably be up sometime tomorrow or at the latest Thursday. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. OK, so going to the slide. 22, you'll see some uh, good links here. Uh, the first one being Smartwood, which again it falls under the Rainforest Alliance umbrella, uh, SDS, and the FSC uh, certificate database. Uh, if you're in doubt about a, a COC uh, certification number, you can go right to this website and uh, they'll confirm that for you. On the next slide, you'll have that USGBC site that has the addenda. Now that's not easy to find if you go to their website. So using that as a link would be very um, helpful. And then finally, if you want to review any of the information I talked about during this presentation, go to this FSC US website and it gives you the full description of all these uh, FSC rules. That's the last link here. And Richard, does that uh, is that addenda um, only the uh, the wood addenda, or is that all the addenda for the whole lead program? It's for the entire lead reference guide. Okay. So yeah, it's like 25 pages. You would scroll down and uh, go to the credit that you're interested in. But yeah, they don't break it out by credit. It's the whole reference guide. Okay, I know some people who print this out, take a scissors to it, tape it to the reference guide. I used book. to do that. No more. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a chore. No, it's just it's good to have uh, on, saved on your file and you refer to it when you're uh, doing specifications or uh, uh, design review. And then well, finally, a, oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I had two quick questions. One mm -hmm. of them being, as related to this page, has there only been one addenda to date to the lead 2009? Or are there other addendas they need to know about? Uh, well, no, there's been three addendas. But what they do is they keep adding it to the addenda on that website link, and they compile it into one document. So if okay. you go to that link, you'll get all the addenda on that one document. And you would choose what edition reference guide you have. Is that perfect? perfect? Yeah. Yep. And then okay. the other question had um, is a little bit more specific here quickly. Um, are you allowed to use FSE recycled wood products as part of your MR7 calculation if it brings you closer to your MR7 goal? Doesn't matter. The answer would be okay. no. Doesn't matter how close you are. It could be 0.1% off. Lead is very strict on that. It has to meet the FSE rules or no credit. Okay, so closing out here, I just wanted to make a reference to this excellent um, guide by Environmental Building News. They've uh, done this report on green building product certifications, and it has a section on wood. Uh, it lists, as you can see on the right side here, those four acronyms. It lists those uh, four systems, FSC, which we've been talking about, FSI that Mark mentioned, and American Tree Farm System. And the last one is Canadian Standards Association. Now, you may want this information because the client wants to do the right thing when it comes to wood. If it's not available in FSC, for example, uh, in the case of the Northern White Cedar, we're going to try to get it certified on the Canadian Standards Association to uh, keep our project on the sustainability track. So there's reasons to go to these other certification systems if you cannot find an FSC that goes beyond lead. And you, but you shouldn't expect to get an innovation credit for, for doing it that way. No, but you can put it in your Green Building Education credit, because there you're showing that it was not not available in FSC, but you did due diligence and you chose another system, which is always better than a clear cut. And finally, and I think we're about just right on time, 
Uh, the lineage depth is reviewed. The last slide, Matt. Yep, we're there. <coughs> what products qualify? All new wood-based products. And again, new refers to or has a caveat, uh, no recycled or reclaimed. Uh, unless it's built into the FSC mixed credit, uh, the FSC classifications, the first two pure mixed credit are 100% and the mixed percentage credit is for the exact percentage that's in the product. And you'll see that in wood panel systems and ceiling systems in wood doors. And the way you specify for the, the two goals, 50% and 100%, is you first consult with your cost estimate and then specify that would in those sections according to the project goals. And the template, uh, I would advise you to see the sample form that I have up here on the website. And it's um, by practice. And with that, do we have any questions? Do we have any time for questions? We have a few seconds. Uh, we don't have any more sure. questions currently as they pop up. And I am. Uh, in the chat box, adding again the link to today's meeting page on the website where the PowerPoint and the presentation will be viewable slash downloadable for you all in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, I do not see any additional questions. It appears that you have uh, you've hit on all the topics that anyone was interested with at the moment. Um, oh, and is asking if the template will be available. I believe I know that one. The template aren't those directly from LEAD themselves? Uh, they are, and I, and I typically use a live template. But if you want to upload that sample one, that's a PDF version. Mm -hmm. uh, the members are certainly welcome to look at that that template. Okay. You, I you can, have to I upload can. it as a separate uh, document, but that's fine. And yeah, comment here just came in the e oh, just comment here said that the EBN guide guide costs forty nine uh, for members and seventy nine for non members. Yes, and it's a great deal because you can also get six linear unit credits if you take read the guide and take the quiz at the end. Thank you, Richard, for uh, sharing your expertise. Um, please, uh, everyone, join us again um, Tuesday, March 15th from 3 to 4. If you have questions, again, that's going to be an open forum meeting. Uh, if you have questions that you'd like to see addressed that we can do a little bit of homework on before... Um, um, before the uh, practice group meeting, uh, please send them to uh, Matt or myself. Um, our emails are there. Um, and so have a good day.